Good is good, it's your boy Tom back here with another video and in this video today guys we're going to be going over, going through, talking about each and every one of the New Year's resolution cards that did get added to NBA 2K20 for my team today. Now, the first thing I want to say is each and every one of these cards does have an Evo. I feel like they always do Evos on New Year's. I don't know if it's like an Evoing into the New Year type of thing. I, I, I think, I'm guessing that's what 2K is trying to go for. But a lot of times, in my opinion, again, this is just me, I personally feel like New Year's resolution has just been kind of a letdown in my team. Now, we'll see. I said it yesterday. I feel like Clay. I feel like, uh, you know, even Luca. They're going to need, you know, change of six, especially for Luca. Not necessarily Clay. Clay could be good anyways. But I feel like for Luca, if he doesn't have a change of six, there's just no chance he is going to be very good at all. But we'll dive into each and every one of these cards. Bones Highland up first. Now, Bones Highland, you look at it. Bones Highland based on normal. Dane Dribble style. Trey Burke leaner. I don't know what that's like. Only 6'2", 4,000 MT. When you do Evo and goes to that Ruby, 89, 3 ball, 90 speed. Here's what you see, Evo. The, uh, the ball handle, the passing accuracy... Those are the main things. The nice part about Bones Highland is he's going to have play badge. That's the best thing I can even say about Bones Highland. I don't necessarily love the card, but he does have play badge, which is probably my favorite badge in the game. So, like, what what am I talking about? Well, it's his takeover. A lot of people, you know, with Bones Highland would have, like, that uh, the athleticism one or even the shooting one. He has play badge. And honestly, if he was a little bit taller, played a lick of defense, I could hype this card up. The problem is he doesn't play a lick of defense only 6-2. It's only a certain amount of things I can hype up for Bones Highland in my team. Mitchell Robinson up next. Oh my gosh. We've got a Mitchell Robinson that can shoot the ball? No, 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 no. Okay, I was not expecting this today. I was like, you know what? Maybe the uh, Dikembe Mutombo we get will be able to shoot the ball. Mitchell Robinson as a Ruby can shoot the ball. 24 base badges on current gen, next gen, the same thing. 53 ball, rebounding 90s, interior 90, a lateral quickness 79, speed 73. I think with Mitchell Robinson, and you guys can correct me if you guys think I'm wrong, he's going to be one of your best budget bigs in my team. Even if you compare him to Nicholas Claxton, because everybody loves Nicholas Claxton, right? I think Mitchell Robinson's just as good. You look at him after the Evo, three ball is basically the same, and defensively, I think it's close. The one thing Mitchell Robinson has are some hot spots and total badges over Nicholas Claxton. So I'm telling y'all right now, do not sleep on Mitchell Robinson and my team. This card is the real deal. And especially when I'm looking at his defense, you know, yeah, he's got the important badges, anchor, a lot of those rebounding badges as well, as well as he is going to knock down shots. Now, what does his release look like? I don't necessarily know. I feel like his release used to be, yeah, that taco fall type base, which in the past has been pretty decent. I've not used it yet this year to really know, but I'm a big time fan of this Mitchell Robinson card. And it's crazy that I've been sitting up here in front of you guys talking for over a minute about Mitchell Robinson, but that's how good and valuable I think this card can be especially if you're just starting your squad. Herb Jones up next, 6'7", seven, 7'0", seven wingspan, good hot spots. Badge wise, the same on current gen, next gen. A 92 lateral quickness. Now, the, 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 I think that's, that's crazy. A 92 lateral quickness on Herb Jones, but the big Evo thing he gets, and again, the Evos aren't loaded into what you know, you have to do to Evo them, but his 3 ball goes to an 88. Good hot spots, gets limitless range on gold, which again, you just don't think of that with Herb Jones. Not that he can't shoot, but it's like, that's never like the best thing about him and you know his defense is going to be great gold 94 feet right stick ripper problem with herb jones not gonna be able to handle the ball brian dribble style feel like his release isn't going to be great probably going to be very mid very mediocre from top to bottom i think this herb jones is really solid as well now do i think he's as good as a guy like mitchell robinson i don't necessarily know but herb jones i am a fan of so out of the sapphires i like herb jones i like mitchell robinson mitchell robinson pat bev up next first thing i want to say for pat bev He's only 6'2". The next thing, I like him in that Wolves jersey. He, that's when, hey man, y'all can say whatever y'all want about Pat Bev. That's when he was best. When he was in the, the uh, with the Timberwolves, that's when Pat Bev was at his prime uh, peak self. Obviously, maybe when he was younger, but as far as his older self, it's when he was at his best. Badge-wise, fantastic. I mean, you're looking at a card with what? Over 40 base badges, hot spots for everywhere, only 6'2". Good three ball, decent speed defensively. Look at the perimeter defense. 97 perimeter. 97 
and lateral cleanness. That's ridiculous for Patrick Beverly. I mean, are you serious? Good speed with Bobo and Hall of Fame clamps. Agent 3 on Hall of Fame. Release wise, I know it's only on normal, but it, you should be able to agree with it. Trade leaner, normal dribble style. I don't hate Pat Bev. The problem I see is he's only 6'2. Just undersized, can't dunk, but defensively, he is going to be an absolute menace. Kenyon Martin up next. You guys are seeing a lot of these shooting Evos. Like every single one of these cards that we've gotten has basically been a shooting Evo. For Kenyon Martin, here's what you are looking at 6'9, 7 foot wingspan, good hotspots, 86 3 ball, 85 speed, solid defense, good standing dunk, driving dunk, can handle the ball, Hall of Fame rebound, re uh, corner specialist, post riser. I actually don't mind this Kenyon Martin card not a card that i think is like super exciting but he's gonna knock the uh, but he's gonna be able to dunk the ball he's gonna be able to knock down shots there's just nothing bad about this card and then that's kind of what i'm gonna leave you with for 10,000 mt a really solid budget option in my team next up guys we have got to talk about jj reddick an absolute sharpshooter in my team you kind of know what you're getting here now he's already got a 96 three bow so he's gonna need to see a speed defense evo he sees speed and his driving dunk goes to a 70 with hall of fame posterizer that's crazy for a jj reddick who i don't even know how many career dunks he has probably not many hall of fame catch and shoot limitless range the problem with jj reddick is his defense is still not great jj reddick based on normal timing and that pro dribble style. So I don't want to hate on JJ Redick. I think the card is fine, but I just, I don't think, I still don't think he's going to play a ton of defense. And that's kind of what I was really hoping for. Obviously, yes, he needed that speed upgrade. So I can't sit here and complain that he got that. But when I'm looking, you know, at him compared to a lot of these other cards that we've gotten, I just think all those other cards are more complete. And even a Herb Jones compared to JJ Redick, take it Herb Jones. JJ's only 6'3". Dikembe Mount Matembo up next, 7276 7'6 wingspan. Hot spots from four to five places around the arc. Defensively already looks fantastic. He evos to a diamond and gets an 84 three ball. Now look, Wemby came out last week and Wemby has a great three ball. He's 7'4", all this stuff. Wemby's the best center in the game. But now you can pick up Dikembe Matembo for 42,000 MT. You can evo him and uh and yeah he becomes dominant holla gets holla the bad box out beast chase artist rebound chaser as well as catch shoot claymore quarter specialist green machine bronze range and defensively is fantastic 70 or 97 interior great rebounding stats 98 block the three ball goes up to an 84 so it's not like he just has like a 75 three ball goes all the way up to an 84 you give him speed vertical the kembe metembo is going to be one of the most dominant big men in the entire game he is that good that elite I don't want to hear anything else. The Kevin Matumbo, absolutely that man. Jordan Poole up next, 6'4, 6'6 six, six, six wings, man. I feel like Jordan Poole in my team is going to be tough for him to be great. Now, I will say the defense for JP looks really solid. Like, I, I didn't know, obviously, what they would upgrade. Probably his defense, but I mean, looks really solid. He comes with Hall of Fame Challenger, Interceptor, Off Ball Pets, Picked Out Your Workhorse, as well as Killer Combos, Dead Eye. So, I mean, yeah, I didn't necessarily think Jordan Poole was, was going to be great. I still don't necessarily love his release. Dame dribble style is fine. Pro leaner is fine. But he is going to play a ridiculous amount of defense. And he is 6'4", so his frame's not bad either. For a guy like myself, I didn't think Jordan Poole would be anything special. But this card looks okay. Looks like you can play him and have a lot of success with him in my team. Dennis Rodman, I'm an X6'7", 7, 7'3", seven, wingspan. Problem with Dennis Rodman is that release. Okay, Patrick Ewing based on normal timing, basic dribble style. I don't want to sit here and, and hate on, on, on Dennis Rodman because he is going to do some things for you, especially defensively. He is going to be absolutely lights out. One of the best, if not the best defensive player at the small forward position. The problem is that three ball. Now, I, I, it's, I'm not saying that his three ball is low. I'm saying his release is absolutely horrible. I knew that coming into this video that his release wouldn't be great. And it's just really, really rough in my team. So as far as these Amis to Diamond to Kembe, the best. Jordan Poole is second best. Rodman, not very good. D'Angelo Russell up next, 6'4", six, 6'9", six, wingspan. He needs to see a lot of defense. He is 160,000 MT. And when you Evo him, he gets 14 Hall of Fame badges, which is ridiculously good. D'Lo, decent interior, decent perimeter, decent lateral, quick, quick 
weakness here. It does get out of it, ankle braces, clamps, and glove. The problem I see is these aren't elite defensive stats. They're fine. I can't hate on them, but they just are not a elite in my opinion. 93 ball, 91 speed is fine. I don't love this D'Lo Evo. I still think D'Lo is going to be fine because his dribble style is fine. His release this year is fine. I just wish he would have had a, either a better driving dunk or more defense. His defense is fine, but it's just not that next level good in my team. And I'm not hating on him. I actually really like D'Angelo Russell in uh, in 2K this year. I, I, I don't mind the card. I just think to spend 160,000 MT, you're not getting your in return on investment out of D'Angelo Russell. Blake Griffin up next, 6'9", 6'11", weeks, man. The big thing for Blake is we need a power forward. We need him to be able to play the power forward position at an extremely high level because he's only 6'9". Now, when you do Evo him, it's all defense. Has an 86 three ball, 88 speed, solid standing and driving, a good speed ball, ball no good rebounding. Defensively, gets Hall of Fame anchor. Pogo stick, post lockdown workhorse. Some key defensive badges there, as well as a bunch on gold. Comes Hall of Fame, big driver, obviously going to be able to shoot the ball. Release, still Blake Griffin on normal, normal leaner pro dribble style. Again, he's fine. I don't love Blake Griffin. He is a complete power forward. You can't hate on his defense. I just don't know if he is that next level good. Dark Novinsky up next. Yes, here you're going to get a Dark that can absolutely play defense. So just kind of know what to expect there. Dark Still going to have that slow release, but it's chicken. It's slow, but chicken in my team. Now, when you do Evo him, oh, never mind. His defense is horrible. He gets dunking. Not what I was looking for out of Dirk I, at all. So, to be honest with you guys, each and every one of these diamonds in D'Lo, in Blake, in Dirk is a big time letdown. Dirk's the biggest one, though, because he's seven feet tall. I was hoping if he got some defense, he'd be able to play. Defensively, is just not it. How I'd rank the diamonds, probably Blake number one, D'Lo two, Dirk three. I'm not a fan of any of them. Clay Thompson up next, 98 three ball, 87 speed, really solid defensively. You can already see the defense for Clay Thompson uh, down here, 95 perimeter, 95 ladder quickness. So he's going to see that athleticism dunking type of Evo. Dunking goes to a 95 Hall of Fame posterizer. Does get quick first step, clamp breaker on current gen. If you go to next gen, blow by speed booster, obviously, is what he gets. But when I look at Clay, his defense is fantastic. Hall of Fame challenger, clamps, glove, right stick, ripper. Shooting wise, obviously, fantastic. The problem for me and Clay is how do you get to Clay? When Kobe's in the game, when you've got all these other shooting guards, even a Jimmy Butler is in the game. I do not think you get to Clay when this is what the card looks like. And he's fine. He's got a lot of total Hall of Famers. I don't hate the card. I just think it's going to be a hard time to get to Clay Thompson for 262,000 MT. That's a lot of MT to be investing in a card who you're not sold on. And to be honest, guys, I am not sold on Clay Thompson and my team. Now, it depends. If they put that release on quick, maybe I would have, but I'm just not sold on the card. Luka Doncic, last but certainly not least, 6'7", 6'11", wingspan out spots from everywhere. So the base card looks like, and if you do not think he needs a defensive Evo, I do not know what to tell you because as it stands right now, his defense is absolutely horrible. So if you pick up the card not wanting to do the Evo, you're in for a long day with Luka Doncic. Post Evo, 87 in tier, 91 perimeter, 90 lateral quickness, 92 steel, Hall of Fame clamps, every defensive badge in the entire game. And the best part about Luka Doncic is he basically gets every badge in the entire game. Comes with half range, ankle break, all of those things. Luka Doncic based on normal timing, pro dribble style. Here's the thing. I do not think the Luka Doncic base this year is going to be like it was in 2K 2022, 20, uh, which it was glitched. It's going to be just slow, methodical, not great. And so I still don't hate Luka because he's 6'7". He's going to remind me a little bit of Penny Hardaway. But I think post-Evo, he gives you a little more defense. So I'm not going to sit up here and hate on Luka. I still think with his slow release, it's going to be tough to get this to this card. But I'm going to try him out, see what the card gets into. But you just cannot expect Luka to go out there and be the best offensive player in the game because you are definitely going to be let down. Honestly, guys, I think this set, this drop is more so for the budget ballers that nobody spent types of guys than anything else. When I'm looking at Dikembe, Jordan Poole, Kenyon Martin, Pat Bev, Herb Jones, Mitchell Robinson, those are the guys that really do excite me. Obviously, it is top heavy with Luke and Clay, but none of these diamonds really excite me either. That's going to wrap it up for my video. You guys can let me know your thoughts on each and every one of these cards down below in the comments. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. As always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.